We have had threats of lawsuit under the American with Disabilities Act, I believe it is, for discrimination because of the mental tests that we make some day. It's very similar to what the police department uses, like the Minnesota multiplismic assessment or whatever they call it. So, but in the private sector, that gets tricky because somebody can claim, well, that's discrimination. Let's go, boy! Yeah! Well, here we go. Here we go. Brittany in pink back in the building. Thank you, thank you. It's always good to be back. It's always good to have you here. You're one for not having an interesting story. <laughs> I, I think oh, the last you. I think the last time we we spoke, you you was just getting out of trucking or you was getting out of the truck, not trucking per se. But you was getting out of the truck and you were starting your own roadside business. You was just getting it up, getting it up to par and getting it up to running. I see a little bit later, I I noticed that you're more focused on the roadside and less on the truck. Because last time we spoke, I think you got what, what is it, Arthur? Arthur? Mm -hmm. You got what? Arthur. Or Arthur. You got with them. They sort of bailed you out of a situation. But I haven't seen any content pertaining to you driving for them. Now, I'm not sure that's by choice if you are driving for them, but I haven't seen nothing going on. And then I I see that your roadside business is fast growing. You're you're becoming... <laughs> the fastest growing roadside business up in up in your area. Congratulations to that. And then now I I, I I see a post about somebody coming after your your YouTube and you 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 posted something about some company that's I, I think it's like an MMO type deal. Something like back in the day with mm-hmm. some a few YouTubers signed up with them they'll signed up half of their funds for them to promote the channel or something like that i don't know i'll let you explain it but uh, but yeah so so much so much going on and so much has happened so let's uh let's let's start at the at the trucking side are, are you still trucking or or what no more wasting time let's get it Hold on. Yeah, the truck is uh, the truck is gone. I am no longer driving a semi truck. My trucking career in general is gone. Um, I will say that I personally was impressed with Ardor uh, from what I saw. I never ran a load for them, but Ardor rescued the truck, as you pointed out. And the situation was, we got the truck back, and our roadside business was growing so fast that I just I wasn't physically able to free up the time to drive the truck. And with still owing payments on the truck, we tried to, um, we're kind of in a situation, if that makes sense. Um, So I was either going to have to drive part-time so we could make the rest of the truck payments pay it off or find somebody to drive. And so unfortunately, with the business growing so fast, it was either the business or it was the truck. And so I made the tough decision to let the truck go. We tried to find somebody to drive the truck, but what we quickly ran into was after all of the threats and attacks online, uh, nobody wanted to drive that truck. They were worried that they were going to get shot at or somebody would blow it up. And so I made the tough decision to let one of my babies go and give it back to Arter and uh, double down on the business. So the pink breast cancer lookout truck will get all the trappings and stuff like that. I was going to ask you how hard it was to try to get somebody to drive the truck not for like (laughs) not for like safety reason but how hard as an owner operator to try to get somebody to to come (laughs) in and take care of the truck drive the truck without worries of what's in your pocket you know what i'm saying because it seems as though when when you guys what you guys run into is they show happiness. Oh, I'm glad to work for you. I'm glad you're a popular TikToker or a popular a YouTuber, and I'm here driving for you and all like that, this, that, and the third. And then they get in the truck, and then a couple of, maybe about a week or two later, is they got a problem with you for whatever reason, whether it's money, whether they don't mm-hmm. want to do what they supposed to do or anything like that, or they pocket watching or anything like that. So I, I was going to ask you, like, how? 
how hard is it to find somebody trustworthy to to drive the truck? It was difficult. We we didn't have very many qualified applicants, I can tell you that. And with the security risk, it you know, we really had to screen people. Uh, I think um, so we never had anybody in it. Now, I was going to pay them very well. I personally, I didn't care about the money. I didn't even care about really making a profit other than to have some emergency money if something breaks, right? Because we have the roadside business. Our biggest issue was people were afraid of it. Uh, the only ones that volunteered to come work for me were the guys. I initially opened it up to women only. And I had some guys actually threaten lawsuit against me <laughs> for discrimination. And um, so I opened it up to the guys and they responded, well, yeah, we weren't really interested anyway. So we just wanted to raise that issue. I'm like, really? So yeah, we, unfortunately, we had to let it go. There was, there was no option and it was tough. Um, that was my dream. I almost had it paid off and I was happy driving the truck. And um, this was my plan B. Well, your plan B is looking like it's working out well. So let's let's talk about plan B, the the, the fastest growing roadside company, Midwest Rescue. You're, you're Midwest covered, Road Rescue, yeah. You're, you're covering a lot of ground up there. I, I'm, I, I am in awe of you right now. You're literally grinding. You did what I did back in the day when I started ERS Lockouts and Road Services. But you're going head first, and it's sort of like, you're on the same story as uh, as a pop a lot back in the day. Oh, they they started off small. They started off in one company and then they started branching off and then they opened up uh, franchising and stuff like that. But I haven't heard of pop a lock as much in in my area. Like when I call for like mm-hmm. a lockout or something, now any and everybody and a mama could come out and unlock your door <laughs> or change a tire now the way mm-hmm. the, the way the apps are like a DoorDash or uber eats you get bro down all you got to do is download the app and some some random guy with 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 the 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 long ride if he don't know what he's doing trying to get into your car but you you steadfast oh, with oh, midwest so like i said the fastest growing so where where are we at now you mentioned in the background that you had to unfortunately let somebody go but unfortunately but, yeah but where you where you at with uh, midwest oh god at our peak we we fired eight people <laughs> we're really focused on quality control but we've got we're yeah we're the fastest growing in our region and possibly in the nation at this point we're growing at an eight plus eight or more times multiple so at our peak we had 22 contractors we're about to get Above and beyond that level here shortly, we had to let some people go. But we cover all of Northeast Kansas. We cover part, a good chunk of Northwest Missouri. We cover Southwest Missouri now. We have a division down there and a regional manager. We cover Southeast Kansas, Northeast Oklahoma, Northwest Arkansas. We cover Southwest Indiana, and we cover parts of Kentucky. And we are about to open three additional regions and hire an HR manager. So we are growing fast. I can tell you lock out. Yeah, I know. It's so exciting. I can tell you, I love this better than I did the truck. We talked about this in the background back in the day, like you you was going to start it and all like that. And I'm going to be honest with you. I I didn't think it was going to work. And I, I was hesitant (laughs) because you asked, you, you asked me to, to be an investor. And as much as we talk in the background about it, I was like, man, baby, no. But now that I look at it now, I'm like, damn, maybe I should have sent that money over to you. I didn't expect. Hey, I'm telling you, you just had to get out of that truck. And- I, I will take, I, I would definitely keep that in consideration, uh-huh. Brittany. I would definitely consider that. Uh, so you say you got like 28 roadside contracts that you are affiliated with. Where's more, where's majority of your calls is coming from? Because majority of my calls came from a Jiro. Yeah, we get a high volume with a Jiro uh, at a lower rate, as you know. Yeah, you know, they try to get the low rate, high volume. That's kind of BS. Uh, we though. get calls from, yeah, we get calls from Honk. We get calls, we have a contract with U Haul. We have a national contract now. Well, not only with U Haul nationally, but we also have a national contract with Penske. Uh, we run NSC and AC. Uh, we have a contract with AAA and several of our regions now. We're in talks with other motor clubs with AAA in other states. So, um, no, it works. We're cr- absolutely crushing it. And I can tell you, like, I am so passionate about this job. Now, looking back, 
I'm glad I made the decisions that I did. They were tough at the time, but this is my joy. I can do, I'm going to be that Sam Walton at age 80 or 90. I'm going to be out there scouting new regions. I'm telling you. You, you got so many regions and you got everybody that's on board. Well, AAA back in the day was, was real, real strict. They just recently lighten up their criteria because when I when I was doing it I couldn't get in with uh, with AAA. Mm-hmm. AAA wanted you to have like a, a a small fleet like like maybe about uh I think the lowest was like five cars or something like that. Now being that I was mm-hmm. a one man band, I was trying to make it like yeah, I got the but they wanted pictures mm-hmm. and stuff like that and unfortunately I couldn't couldn't give it to them but but now I hear that AAA, they they their criteria has has they came down on their criteria. So what was it? What was it, and how you was able to get AAA to to be a contract for you? Yeah, we just reached out uh, via email and got a hold of somebody. Uh, sometimes we just send a bunch of emails that we find until we find one that sticks. And um, I think they required three or five vehicle minimum or something uh, for our area. They wanted to make sure we had enough road techs on that we could handle multiple calls at the same time, which we do. Um, but that's about it. I mean, they do watch the stats and things, but they are a little bit more lax than they used to be. Um, I can tell you this, it's been fun. The, we were, we're working directly with the state level manager here in Kansas. She actually comes down to my office once a quarter and we'll sit and talk for about two to three hours. She brings her notebook. She's like, what are you guys doing to like be the top company with AAA? <laughs> so um, we've been privileged to assist them with a lot of improvements as well nationwide. The guys that unfortunately you had to let go, are, are you able to speak on that a little bit? Like as far as your, I can. As far as your quality control, because like when I, was looking for people to to operate back in the day. It was it was difficult then. I had I, I had one guy that literally stole from me. I gave him the tools. I gave him the amount that I was able to pay him. He he signed on and and we was good to go. But then about maybe about a couple of weeks later, I'm start getting calls from my the dispatching place that I, that I'd second hand to. And they was calling me. I was mm-hmm. out of town, and it was like, "Hey, is there anybody working?" It was like, "Yeah." I was right? like, "Yeah, I, I got." I said, "I got an old boy." He was like, "Well, we've been sending calls to him, and he's not responding." So I tried to call him. I couldn't get a hold of him. So when I got back home, he finally got a hold of me because, of course, I didn't come up with the money. So now he comes to get a hold of me. Hey, I was just wondering if I'm going to get my check. I was like, mm, bro, what's, what's what's going on? You haven't ran no 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 calls, and and right? and and you you kind of told me in the test message that you quote unquote lost the tools. I gave him the tools, and I I told him I was like, bro. I said the tools, the the lockout tool that I gave you, the drill set, the gas can. I was like, that's about three, four hundred dollars right there, bro. So I, I'm gonna have to cover for. I'm gonna have to cover for the tools that you lost, my guy. Oh well, well, it, it's not my fault. This, that, and the third. And I'm like, it's your responsibility, bro. I I handed it off to you, and you're responsible for the upkeep, not only the upkeep, but you're responsible for keeping up with the tools, bro. How are you going to do the work if you don't have the tools? Really? I hate to say, I, I hate to say, I kind of agree with some of this escrow stuff. If I give you a truck and you, <laughs> right? and you tell me that you that you lost the truck, how am I going to give you your last paycheck, bro? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he, then he, we went back and forth, and then I say maybe about a week later, his mom called me or some shit like that hey i'm calling about my son he's not getting his check and i was like well i said ma'am he owe, he owes me some tools so i said as soon as i i said as soon as i get my tools back i, I will be happy to give him his check so i say maybe about five o'clock that day he calls me up hey uh, what i was able to find the tools really really <laughs> <laughs> but you, you was able to find what it. What timing, right? Yeah. So I said, well, I said, Word. I said, well, meet me up at at this plaza, and and we'll do the handoff there. So we met up at the plaza, mm-hmm. and yeah, he he gave me my he gave me my tools back, and I cut him a check. 
And and that was it, man. No, it was just trying to just trying to find some honest people was 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 real difficult. So how how is it for how is it for you and and the the people that you had to let go? Extremely tough. Um, as a matter of fact, it's probably tougher than it is for other companies. So our philosophy, first and foremost, is there are you know you might be familiar with A players, B players, and C players within a company, and right. it's just what it sounds like. You got your top people, you got the people that are just doing their job, bare minimum. That's it. And then you have the ones that no show and so forth. Right. But statistically, your A players as a company owner are going to outperform the others by at least 30%. So if I can focus on getting more A players on my team, I'm better off running shorthanded with A players than I am running fully staffed with DRCs. And so to give you an answer directly, we only accept on average one in every 75 applicants. Um, we'll make it through the application process. We put them through the, um, the an extensive application background check. Uh, we have an extensive interview, including a two-minute psychometry procedure that we do, which tests their mental acuity. And then we put them through the Oxford Capacity Analysis, which is a psych test online to test their abilities. And then if they pass those, one in every 75 will, they will move on to get hired. And uh, after that, only two thirds will make it through our field training program and be out in the field. So we'll be extremely tough and we have to be because there's, you can't, when you have somebody on the side of the road in a dangerous situation, you have to make sure they're on their game. They can handle the stresses of the job. And um, you got to trust somebody being out there at 3 a.m. with some woman alone on the road, you know, and make her feel comfortable. How are you able to pay out? Is, is it by percentage or is it, or do you actually offer them an actual salary? Because me, it, it was, it was a percentage because, because of the low amount. I get a call for like $25. Out of that $25, I got to put $5 away for the dispatch. Then then out of that $20, that's where the the split would come in between me and 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 who's working for me. So I I try to I I try to make it comparable like maybe I would take like 40 and and try to give them the 50, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what we do. We we do a percentage. We hire contractors. The reason we go with 1099 first and foremost is we have had threats of lawsuit under the American with Disabilities Act, I believe it is, for discrimination because of the mental tests that we make them take. It's very similar to what the police department uses, like the Minnesota Multiplismic Assessment or whatever they call it. So, but in the private sector, that gets tricky because somebody can claim, well, that's discrimination. And in reality, we're doing a very similar task to what police officers do every day on the side of the road. And so we want to be very careful. So we can get around that by hiring contractors. Okay. Um, we like the percentage um, and we offer an incentive. So we start at 50% currently, which is already higher than our competitors. And if they perform well, week two, we will fast track them to 55%. Week three, we will cap them out at 60%. So we incentivize them. Uh, we base that on the highest level pay with the Kansas State Highway Patrol for Lucas. Takes you three years with, with uh, Kansas Highway Patrol to get to that top pay tier. With us, takes three weeks. But you got to be here on time. You got to communicate. I mean, it's you got to have your act together. <laughs> so you do what you're supposed to do. We reward you greatly. That's my philosophy. Well, now that you're growing expeditiously, and of course, this is a 1099 contract. Are you considering record work now? Or is that is that is that thought in your head somewhere around? Or get a flat bid yes, or sir, get a yes, record? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. We're, um, so we're working on the financials. I don't know if you're aware. It gets kind of complicated as a business owner yeah. when you're growing as fast as we are because the banks will want to qualify you using last year's revenue. Right. We're in eight times multiple. You can't compare us to last year. We're night right. and day different. Right. And so we have to get other people involved now to do like a future analysis on expected income that will increase if we finance a piece of equipment. So it gets more complicated, but we're at that phase. We're planning to add a tow truck, a second winch vehicle, and we are also in talks 
about starting a charity nonprofit that will send an emergency crew out to FEMA disasters. Uh, we're, we're working on starting a search and rescue crew as well um, for tornadoes, hurricanes, et cetera. And then we're also in talks about uh, opening up a private ambulatory service. Okay. That would be a different business owned by our current one. But um, we may, might actually buy an ambulance and hire doctors and EMTs. It was. I, I'm, I'm hearing it. So, Brittany, man, you being that you've been busy with building your business, of course, you you don't have time to come on and social media and try to do every you know, try to do all this social media stuff like like people do with their business and stuff like that. You you kind of mm-hmm. you kind of been away from social media with only posting light content maybe it's something tough. something crazy that happened on the road or or a couple of a couple of videos that you did with the with the storm chasers speaking of which you you posted in your community post that some some i guess media outfit is trying to lock you out sort of say out of your out of your youtube and try to snatch it from you what's What's going on with that? Yeah, so remember back when we had all the death threats and things happening and people trying to hack our platform? Yeah. Air Media out of Canada, uh, Air Media Tech is what they are on Google. They approached us offering a business deal where they could be our what's called an MSM or as YouTube calls it, network partner. Yeah, all that yeah. does is that allows them to get a percentage of the revenue, that's how right. they get paid, like twenty percent. And in exchange, they will step in, they will moderate comments, they will go after anybody who threatens us, uh, they will go after anybody who takes our copyright, et cetera, et cetera. They also had another whole laundry list of services they were going to help us with, including thumbnails, editors, stuff like that. Um, so of course we accept warmly accepted their help because we were overwhelmed. I couldn't handle it. We had thousands coming in constantly that were threatening. And, um, so we brought them on and, uh, long story short, they failed one service after another to do their job. I kept having to step in and take over their position because they wouldn't, uh, they did not honor their contract. Um, lastly, this last fall, what ended up happening. So let me give you, a uh, without going into a long story of what happened. Uh, our original contract stated that we own, maintain the ownership of our copyright. So no chance that they can touch our copyright. They're just here to help manage. It was clear. It was, we had that on file. They send us a payment. They wanted me to, it was like a payment acknowledgement form. It was a policy explaining their ACH procedure and how they'll pay us our 80%, they'll take the 20, yada, yada. That one I quickly signed off on without reading the whole thing. And I'll tell you why, Uh because I had just signed this contract that states I own my copyright. They can't override my contract. And that's just a payment acknowledgement form. I don't care about it. So we signed it. Um, When we attempted to disconnect with them at the beginning of June, we put in our 30-day disconnect with YouTube. They advise us that if we don't pay them a $2,000 ransom payment, that's what I call it, that per their contract, they now own me. They own my personal copyright and my business copyright. And I say, no, you don't. Uh, We have the contract in front of me. I own it. That's to the YouTube channel, right? Well, they're claiming they own everything, including Facebook, TikTok. They said all of your social media platforms, we now own your copyright and your company's copyright for Midwest Road Rescue. So um, I reminded them that they don't per our contract. And they pointed out some fine print in the payment authorization form they had me sign. And it says in the fine print that this overrides the first contract and you are now selling out your copyright to this company. They tricked me, completely tricked me, completely false. So I told them, I said, you don't own me. Nobody owns me. Kindly, or I said, file a lawsuit or kindly fuck off. That is what I told them. And they copy struck. 900 plus videos of mine. Wow. So now with with all that's going on, I, I see you, 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 you reached out or are you trying to reach out for some help to save your, your social media outlets? Is this social media mm-hmm. outlets that's, that's pertaining to your, your personal name, like Brittany R- Richardson or everything that's pertaining to uh, YouTube? Like you had, you went by the American trucker at one point, you got Bree, mm-hmm. Bree TV. So they, they going after all of those as well? Uh, the only one I'm aware of that they 
are going after is they struck our uh, Midwestward rescue videos for having the logo in there. So apparently they're claiming ownership of our logo as well. Um, the other, but they did strike, they struck every video going back to some of my first videos that I produced in 2016 and 17. Wow. They're claiming they own it all. Now, uh, from a legal standpoint, I will tell you that they do not. First of all, I signed a deal in 2021 with them, late 2021. Actually, I was going into 2022. It was in 2022. We signed a deal with them and I signed it under Brittany Richardson. It was just me as a sole prop viewing it as an influencer at the time. We've since sold out. I've sold that all to my company, which I own, right? <laughs> so I still control, but I sold that to Midwest. Load Solutions LLC, which is what the truck was under. And then um, there we have Midwest Road Rescue is owned by the LLC. So now we have a dilemma because they have a contract with me. They didn't have a contract with my LLC. So now we've, we're building up to a legal dispute. I hope all that works out for you in the long run. <laughs> Brittany, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to tell you. You're gonna have to start reading those fine prints, man. That's that's where they get you. They they get you with the fine prints. They, that they, everybody that gets into trucking or any business, or like when they give you the handbook. Oh, yeah. When they give you the handbook, you guys oh, is quick to you but, guys is quick to like you know, skim over the handbook and all like that and go right to the back and sign off on it. No, you gotta you gotta read that handbook. You gotta gotta read the fine right? print. I agree with you. You know, I spent nearly eight hours reading every line of the original contract, signed it off. When they tell me, hey, this, you just need to acknowledge here, it's quick to e-sign, acknowledge that you understand our payment procedures, scan through quickly. Okay, yeah, it looks very basic. Sign off. I've already got the contract, read through every line. And then they tell me, just sign off this acknowledgement so we know you acknowledge you know how this works. That, you, you can't do that. That's illegal. You can't slip in fine print in a payment acknowledgement form and claim that that trumps the original contract and is now a contract. So it was really misleading. It wasn't just that I didn't read it. It was that I read every line. However, they slipped in this extra paper that said that contract is null and void. What a mess. Well, again, like I said, I hope everything uh, work out for you. I do appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing your stories with us and everything. It's, it's always a great time with you, Brittany. Oh, I appreciate it. Hey, let me say one more thing. Air Media Tech is this this is gets much worse and i don't want to tie up your time but air media tech that's the guys that go off on the they have a polished resume right what who, who copy hit us on the channel copy claimed us was scale lab out of los angeles california yeah i believe or san diego it was in california scale lab they have a terrible rating come to find out air media owns it they're using scale lab to go do their dirty work so they trick creators with this piece of paperwork, they're above the Canadian border, Air Tech or Air Media Tech is, and then they hire this like pit bull of a company, Scale Lab, to go after the creators over the fine print and then tell creators they can't sue them because they're across uh not state lines, across country lines. So they found a loophole that they can go after creators and take their entire platform. So just keep that in mind. This is a big story. And we, if they continue to fight us, we're still in the dispute process with YouTube. But we fully intend to make this a national story if they want to continue. And like I said, I, I hope everything works out for you, man. And and like I said, I, I I was approached by companies like that back in the day at this at the beginning of my YouTube journey. I I noticed a couple of YouTubers went that route, but I I thought to myself like they got a goal. They they get they they need access to the channel and and don't this, do that, it, and man. the third. Don't do right, it. Right, Hire your own right. people. And I was like, mm, nah, that's that's okay because like I said, I know some YouTubers grew expeditiously from joining I did. that. And yeah, I did. Yeah. I, I but I I argue it was kind of a coincidence. I yeah, <laughs> right, right. If it wasn't for us nasty old truck drivers out here on the road, you wouldn't have none of y'all shit. This video was brought to you by a truck and a truck driver.